Wondering how your mindset affects your life? How to bring more energy into your business and life? Millions of people around the world ask these same questions daily. You are in the right place. Learn practices that will help give your life the meaning and success you've been searching for. Welcome to the Charge Podcast, teaching you how to create habits around real goals every day. Practical life advice from those who made it. Here's your host, Gary Wilbers. Do you struggle with being negative? Most people struggle with being negative. Being positive takes action. Using simple positive actions will allow you to win each day. Being negative is a discharge in three key areas. Number one, your mindset to achieve your goals. Number two, your influence on self and others. And number three, your ability to learn and grow. Implementing simple positive actions into your life will allow you to win each day. Being positive takes action. So let's work to be positive. To receive a weekly video email from me on one simple positive action, subscribe to the series by going to chargepodcast.com to get the link to register today. Life is short, so why live your life by default when you can live your life by design? Make it a great day. Welcome, Chargers. We're glad to have you back again this week for another great podcast. I'm telling you, when you want to get things done, how do you do it? I'm telling you, you got to think about it because do you always have to do it or does someone else? Well, today we're going to talk about a subject that I think is going to be very interesting and our guest Bill is going to tell us about it. But Bill, first, will you share with them what problem will you solve for our listeners? Today, Gary, we're going to solve the problem of how do I make my delegation better? From wherever you are, whether you're working from home, whether you're working in an office, a hybrid environment, whatever industry, you've got to work through delegation. So how are you going to make it better? At the end of the 30 minutes, you're going to learn practical ways on how to do that. Well, I'm telling you, I know this is going to be a great conversation. And know everyone, it doesn't matter where you're at. You always have to delegate something. Sometimes even to our kids, we want to delegate it, make sure that it's done right. Like, right. So today I want to welcome Bill Ringel. He's a former Apple executive who founded growbusinessnow.com. Bill works with leaders of privately held high-tech companies to work more effectively and serve larger client bases without the drama, frustration, and misunderstandings, and of course, the chaos and stress that is often the norm. He has dedicated his professional career to helping overwhelmed managers become more admired leaders who can help grow and scale companies. Bill is the author of the upcoming book titled Grow Business Now, and he hosts My Quest for the Best the podcast for ambitious small business leaders with more than 400 episodes with top published thought leaders like Daniel Pink, Doug Conant, Whitney Johnson, um, John Lee Dumas, Dory Clark, sharing their stories, strategies, and tools with listeners. Bill travels from Philadelphia and can be found playing tennis, playing Wordle, or hiking with his border collie when he's not working. Bill, welcome to the Charge Podcast. Glad to have you. Great to be here, Gary. Well, this topic is so relevant because this day of stress, overwhelm, and so much to do and not enough time to do it, it's really about delegation and what we can do with that. So let's just start with the very basic, really, what do you feel, what is delegation for a small business leader and how can they really improve to become better with it? I'd like to start that by contrasting what people typically do versus what delegation is intended to do. Mm. What people typically do in my observation and experience is they like to dump. We're getting a new person on board. Okay, everybody's thinking about the the tasks that they like the least and they just wanna pass them off to the new person. Or they get an assistant, they figure out how to pass it off to the new person, that's dumping. When you delegate, there are three aspects of it that make it effective. First of all, you're getting more done than you could do just on your own without spending more time. Second of all, you're involving others. And third, you're building bench strength throughout the organization. So when those three things are present, then it's delegating. And what you wanna do is learn how to delegate effectively so that you're hitting those three marks. And and when you do that, you're really doing the job of someone who could be trusted with more and more responsibility within your organization. 
Yeah, it's so interesting to hear you say the dump because, you know, so often managers, leaders, bosses, ever, we come in and we've got to get something and you just pass it on versus really getting there. And I just love delegation is really about getting more things done. But for some business leaders, they have that challenge that, number one, they've done it. They've grown up in their business, but their business is growing and it's expanding and they know they need help with it. So what's a few signs that you see that delegation might not be working as well as it could be in their business? All right. So when I talk with people who are senior managers and I say, tell me how the the workflow goes and how you're assigning things to other people. If I hear a phrase such as, well, this is how it should go, but I just found it faster or easier to do myself. Mm -hmm. People are giving themselves kind of a, a compliment but they don't recognize that it's also showing where their limitation is. When they say, well, I'm more skilled at that, you're also saying you're unskilled at being able to teach others how to do it, no matter what it is. So when you hear yourself say, well, I didn't have time to delegate. It was faster for me just to do it myself. That's fine. That's okay to get that done today. However, next week, make it a part of your plan to teach one or two other people how to do it so you're not stuck in that tight situation, under stress, under pressure. So that's one of the things that typically comes up. And it's a really easy thing. I think all of us can relate to that, where we just didn't have time to tell someone or describe what we wanted done. And you just was, it was either do it yourself. And what I encourage people to do is think about where are the areas, what are the skills, the activities, the processes that you're running that you do best, you add the most value in your company, in your business by you doing that? And then what are the things where you're not adding the most value? And then where you're not adding the most value, figure out how you can get assistance with it, how you can teach others to do it. Nobody, so one of my key tests, and this is pretty interesting, one of my key tests is for you to ask yourself, is it really adding value if I do this? Hmm. I think everyone listening could say to themselves, well, what are the things that have to be done for the business to expand? We need to keep updating our website. Great. Does it really matter whether you, Gary, are the one who goes in and edits and clicks save or update in order to update your website? Or does it just need to be updated with the content that you've reviewed and approved? Yeah, Yeah, that becomes the real key because, you know, the thing is, you don't want Gary touching the website because there'll be more problems that will happen. Right. (laughs) So that's part of it. It's just looking and saying, where do I add the most value? And where if I, if I, you know, too many cooks spoil the broth, where should I keep out of things to let the people I've hired do their job and do it well? Well, I'm sure in your experience with you being an Apple, former Apple executive, you had challenges all the time where if you weren't delegating, it was really becomes a cycle. And I think that's what happens to people. They feel so overwhelmed that then they stop delegating. Can you share some uh, story or an example of how it made a difference for you? Absolutely. I quickly found out that with the responsibilities I had when I was at Apple, that if you don't learn to delegate and share responsibility, as well as share credit for successes, that you quickly lose access to very talented people. So I learned to delegate and I knew that we had big projects that we were working on. In one instance, I had to work with a team in Austin and a team in California, and I was based in Philadelphia. So there were a lot of video calls, there were a lot of documents. And I I quickly realized that what I needed to do was be very clear from the beginning what I wanted done and how it would look. So there's a tip. When you are creating, like I was creating a training, and I said, this is a training, it's designed to last half a day, and I need input from you guys specifically to answer these questions. I need a demo that's going to illustrate this feature of the software. And the demo needs to be, you know, under five minutes. And I need slides that are done this way. I need to be really good at being able to envision what the end result looked like and then bring in the particular experts to work on those aspects of it. And then at the end, what I did that everyone liked is I was given credit. I wanted to thank, you know, John for doing this and Marsha for doing that and Patty for this and Lou for that. All of that came together. And I always had a credit slide on my trainings so that I was able to give people acknowledgement and and thanks for the way that they contributed. 
Yeah, and I think that becomes a big one because that way they feel part of the team. And number two is next time they want to help you even more because they feel like they've been appreciated for what they did um, through the process. You talk about something that's very interesting there about kind of the remote, and we're seeing more and more of this. And I know as small business owners, um, they're having the challenge of hiring people right now. And of course, there's a lot of them. I see a lot of things out about virtual assistants and having that distant assistance that's there. And I've talked to different people about that. But small businesses have a hard time, those owners, of kind of letting go. And you've talked about some of the areas already that would really help them, but it really becomes in, that really helps them do the things that they love to do, right? Versus the things that really, <laughs> you know, there's certain things I don't like to do. And it's best if I don't, because the problem is I put it off and then I don't have that energy to be able to create it and make it happen. Exactly. That's a really common area. And Gary, I think that we have to address a couple points here. One is that people <clears throat> want to be able to get to the things they want to do, but they have to give up something in order to do that. And everyone who's started a business, launched a project, launched a, launched a product, understands that overriding control. We have that control monster that kind of gets up on our backs. Oh my gosh, I've got to do it. It's my name on the line. And that's true. And it, what it means is that you've got to be more proactive and better at planning so that you can be responsible and accountable for the results. However, you're going to have other people doing the work. So you've got to be good with that. Second, you've got to do the thing that I said earlier, which is be able to envision the outcome of how you want it so that you know what people you need to contribute, what resources. And then the third thing is, is to build in a sort of feedback loop, letting people know right from the start that they're going to um, offer some work. They're going to say that they've done their part and we're going to review it before we say it's done. One person can't say that the job is done or that the subtask is done. You've got to say, ready for review. Oh, if I've assigned it, I'm going to review the work. If you've asked me to do something, I'm going to give it to you, Gary, and I'm going to say, here's my result. Please review it. And that gives you the opportunity to say, oh, I love this. I love this. I love this. Could we have more on point C? And you give some feedback and then it's built in. Oh, okay. I'm not taking it as a criticism. That was part of the feedback. We want to succeed together and I want to support you. And then when you say, okay, I've reviewed it. Everything looks great, Bill. Done. Now we've both said that it's done and it could be passed off to the done column. Yeah, I love that. And I just love where instead of worrying about the control, because for a lot of people, that's the challenge is leaders and managers and bosses. We want to control it. And I love your concept of being proactive, but it's really about planning it out. Um, and when you plan that out, then you can achieve that objective or that goal, that outcome that you ultimately need to reach in that area. Now, one of the first things managers, of course, and we're talking all about business owners as well as managers, as well as leaders, they always can work to improve that delegation. And you've given some tips already there, but I'm sure you can share with us some more things that how can they, because that's the problem is I think some of them you've given some right there with the feedback loop, but what else could they do to really create a framework around to help them when they delegate to something, know that it's going to be successful? So let me share with you a story about where my delegation framework came about. And it started off at a lunch at a mastermind meeting. Remember when we used to get together and have lunch with people? That was great. I can't wait till yeah. that comes back again. So it was at a mastermind in uh, San Diego for people who were looking to have six figure per month businesses. And I was sitting at lunch with strangers. We hadn't really met before there. And the woman to my left was Pamela. And she was saying how she had this graphic uh, design business. And maybe she was doing websites and stuff. And she, I, she said, I'm doing really well. And I've got, um, I'll, I've got maybe four people working for me. And I said, so what would change if you had twice as much work come in the door starting Monday? And she said, my head would explode. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And I said, well, that's not uncommon. Let's back up because we, we're here now. We've already carved out this time. We've got 45 minutes left for lunch. Let's talk about it. And what I did is I said to her, I said, show me what your workflow is. And I said, let me show you how I would design it differently. And what I did is I just drew on a napkin and I had one column 
for planning. I said, when you have a project come in, start with the planning column. Describe everything that you need for someone to take this on and run with it, do their work and be successful. Put that in planning. And then here's one of the big steps. The project hasn't begun until the person you've assigned it to accepts it. This happens so much when people start using what I hate the name of project management software. Most people are not doing projects. They're running processes. You want someone who's expert at doing copywriting to run their their copywriting for a landing page process. You want someone who's good at um, doing the technical back end to be able to do a form for your landing page. You have people who are running known processes. And I said to Pamela, I said, when they begin work on this, you want to be able to know how much time they're spending. So have them move it when they start, have them move the task from the planning column to the doing column. She says, oh, that's great. So they really haven't begun until they've done that. And then I said, now, when they finish, they've got a choice. So the person that you've assigned it to, let's say that Pamela's assigned it to Boris. Boris works on it. He's moved it to the the doing column and he has a choice when he finishes the time given to him for that. He could either say, Pamela, I'm done and move it into the checking column. Or you could say, I need more time on this and moves it back to the planning column. So he may have a week to do it and he may do it in a couple chunks. He may work on a Tuesday, Wednesday, and then Friday morning in order to have it done by noon, which is part of what Pamela said. She needs it by done by noon Friday. Because when it goes to the checking column, then Pamela gets involved and she says, oh, good. I need to check this, give it feedback and either we'll move it to the right, which is the done column or back two um, slots over to the planning column. And that simple framework has saved... Pamela took this and was able to say, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I'm ready to let in more business. And Gary, you know, if someone in their mind and in their heart just feels like their head would explode if they got in twice as much business, are they really going to be doing what they know they could be doing to double the size of their incoming client load? Would they? No. No way. No way. They it's feel self-preservation. Yeah. They, do, they if, would think that I have to either add more people Um, And then they're worried about that because the cost factor, could they do it? And it really creates a clog in their business is what happens. And they're kind of at that, okay, we don't have any more capacity. So instead we've got either way, only way we can increase capacity is people. And of course that gets costly. Instead, what you're talking about is by doing more planning and really setting it out and having a framework for it, you're able to handle more capacity. Exactly. Exactly. And what we just talked about may be easy to understand or it may be easier to understand if people actually had a document. So we've got a special page set up for listeners of this podcast. Can I give the web address now or should we wait till later? No, go right ahead. So if you go to growbusinessnow.com forward slash charge for this podcast, you'll have access to the the delegation framework, which I just described. So it's a template that you could print out as many times as you want and start to use to build into your own workflow and systems. Yeah, and that becomes a great tool. So please check that out. His website is full of great information. So you want to check that out anyway. I've went on and checked it out myself, Bill. And You've got some great resources on there for people. So tell people to check it out. Because the challenge is, as leaders and bosses and managers is, We've got to be better delegators. That's how we get more work done. Um, there's a leadership training that I do, and they talk about, it, and I think Stephen Covey's one said it, something of the nature of, your job as a leader is to get work done through others. But when you were an individual contributor, it was 80% is all about you. But when you become a leader, it's just the opposite. It's about your success is really getting that done through others. And let me jump in there. I say, I go even further. I say that if you are looking to get more responsibility within your organization, if it's a small business of 20 people, if it's a a, medium-sized business, um, you want to be able to hone your delegation skills because the ability to delegate is what the managers above you are looking at when they think to themselves, should I give this person more responsibility, more resources? more people to manage themselves. If you are doing well with yourself and your peers, when you have no title and no authority to say to someone, I want you to do this for me, 
but you've worked on your skills, you've built those relationships, you are able to get more things done, you will stand out and you will rise within your organization because of your delegation skills. Well, Bill, this has been an interesting conversation. And before we go to the recharge round, there is one that I saw on your website and I wanted to ask you about this. You have, is it a kind of like an assessment that you can discover your actual delegation style? That's right. I've listened to you know hundreds of people talk about their delegation style. And what I've found is that people are going to come into this with a certain bias based upon their own work experience, based upon who's mentored them based upon your own beliefs about how to do work. And I I give you a a short quiz, a few questions. And when you answer the questions, I say, what is your delegation style? And then also show you how to maximize your effectiveness that way. And then also how to mitigate (laughs) some of the the, um, unpleasant or unproductive ways that you work in each of those areas. And that's part of, you'll find on that page as well. um, When you go to my question for growbusinessnow.com, forward slash charge. Yeah. So he's given us all that capability. And that's one, I'll be honest, I'm very interested, interested in your framework too, because I know I can become better as a leader myself. And, you know, I know about delegation and I do it some, but I'll be honest, I sometimes get into that hurry and I become more of that dump versus actually truly delegating it. So long-term that it's going to make this success. Bill, I truly appreciate you sharing your wisdom there. Share with the audience again, if they they struggle with this, and I don't care if it goes back, what would be the the couple steps that you would tell them to get out of their selves to be a better delegator? Okay. So first of all, Gary, everyone who's listening to us today is now going to have that that reaction when they're dumping. They're going to say, ooh, I'm dumping now. (laughs) We've, We've talked about it. It's out in the open. We've all done it before. And now you're aware of it. So you're going to have that little bit of regret, um, remorse when you do that. So you're aware of that. When you do that, you have to make sure you're planning time each week. And when you plan time each week to say, how do I want this week to go? You want to look out into the future a week. And how do I want to get things done? And ask yourself, who's going to contribute? Who has the best skills to do this? And what resources are necessary to make them successful? Good um, entrepreneurs And business leaders understand that you're not going to hire people who are just like you. You've got to hire people with different skill sets who are stronger in other areas. And when you do that correctly, you'll have a stronger team and a stronger, more profitable business that makes more impact. When you hire people, that's great. But as you alluded to earlier, Gary, smart business leaders understand you don't have to have a long-term relationship in order to get more things done. You could hire a VA, you could hire experts to do things quickly when that task is needed. So I hope that when you do video editing, you're outsourcing that so that you have an expert who's doing that if it's not a full-time part of your business, things like that. So just make start making lists. That's one of the things that we do in my programs is we start making lists of the activities that you do regularly, and then you sort it like Harry Potter's sorting hat. You say, All right, what are the things that you do best and where you're adding the most value? What are the things that help you prepare for doing what you do best? If traveling for speaking engagements is one of the things that you do best, great. So one of the things you need to do is be able to have someone who could do the booking and the airline reservations and preparing the slides and making sure you have everything you need. That's a good use of delegation because it might be someone's most fun thing to do to find those connections and prepare those slides. And then the third area is to know the things you should never be doing. It's like when you said earlier, We don't want Gary working with the website. (laughs) Everyone's got things like that. And what are the things you shouldn't be doing? Do you have someone who you've trained and you can have confidence in to do that? And let me me close with this, Gary. And and that is, is that anyone who recognizes the importance of delegation understands this, that getting work done in a business is about two things, not just one. It's about doing the work and also communicating the status of the work you're working on with those who are related to that activity. So as soon as you recognize that it's both the work and communicating the status of it, then you're already in a great mindset for effective delegation. Well, you've helped me already today, Bill, because after this is I was going to dump some things to my marketing person, and um, I'm going to go back and rethink how I need to do it. I'm going to still I'm going to do a little bit of planning and what I want to share with her. And then I'm going to kind of put it to her doing column, but let her accept it first. 
And then we're going to work through this checking because it really makes sense. Because what I was going to do is say, I need this, this, and this. And I'm going to go back and really think through that. So I appreciate that. And it, it's helped me. So I know it's going to help our charge listeners um, through the process too. So thank you very much. Share with them again the website address, and then we will jump into the recharge round questions. The website address is grow business now forward slash charge. So that'd be in show notes too. So if you're exercising or you're doing something active now, go to chargepodcast.com and we'll have that in show notes so you can easily access those materials because that delegation framework he's going to give you as well as your delegation style, you're going to be able to take that as well as a checklist of some of the common questions to be answered. So appreciate you doing that for the Charge Podcast listeners, Bill. My pleasure. Okay, here's two questions. I ask every guest these two questions, but the first one is charge. That's my mantra. Create habits around real goals every day. What habit do you think has led to success in your life? The, one of the habits that led to success in my life is to be prepared. I just always like to be prepared for things. When I was in college, I was everyone's favorite lab partner because I always did the pre-labs and I was always ready to, to get going with things. Make sure you have you know, all the things you need to be successful. And that served me well as an entrepreneur where you have to create the structure, the programs, and all of the systems in order to be successful. Excellent. Now, we've all made mistakes. We've all had failures. And one reason I bring this up, because I want listeners to realize we've struggled through them too, because they may be struggling through something right now. So basically, what is a do-over that you'd love to have in life? And it can be business or personal. So as I thought about that, I embrace the mistakes that I've made and say, you know, what have I learned from each one? The thing that I'd like to do that I think would make me more effective and have, you know, be a great do-over is just to do things a little sooner, to reach out for help sooner, to ask questions of technical experts sooner. And one of the things that I've done to kind of bring that into the company is I have a policy that says, listen, we could, any of us can struggle with any aspect of our work for 15 minutes. And then after 15 minutes, after you've looked things up online, just go reach out for help. So 15 minutes is the length of time that I allow myself or anyone else to struggle with not knowing something before we're reaching out for help. Excellent. Great advice there. I appreciate you sharing that, Bill. And I appreciate your time today to be on the Charge podcast. Such a pleasure, Gary. Thank you so much. Now, remember, go to growbusinessnow.com backslash charge to get those resources, and we'll have it in show notes so you can get those, and he has a lot of great information he's sharing with us there. But chargers, the big thing I want you to do is think about what action do you need to take. I already told you my action. I've got to rethink about, instead of dumping, how am I truly delegating what I'm getting there and put a system and a process in place that will make me a more effective leader, really is what it does. And I will get less frustration because she's going to know what to come back to and how to be able to present that to me. So for yourself, what is it for you? When you think about the area of delegation, what do you need to change and what action do you want to take from that? Because that's the key. You can listen to all this great information, but it's about implementing something that makes a difference. So Chargers, as we come back next week with another great guest, remember, think about what you can do to improve your systems and processes in the area of delegation. I look forward to seeing you next week. Make it a great day. This podcast has ended, but your life doesn't just stop. To continue your inspiring journey, head over to chargepodcast.com and access all the tools and resources mentioned on today's show. If you enjoyed this episode, consider sharing with somebody who may also benefit from the advice provided. That's chargepodcast.com. Until next time, charge in business and life.